Hey guys, just before I crack on with the video, I would like to draw your attention to a podcast myself and a few friends of mine have decided to start. It's over on the YouTube channel Project Chronicle. I will, of course, link to it down in the description below. Uh, have, a, have a listen to the pilot, and if you like it, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We're hoping to do them weekly, although we're going to have the occasional themed podcast that falls on a weekday as well. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Go and check it out and subscribe if you like it, and uh, on with the video. Hey guys, so as part of my 5,000 subscriber special, I'm going to be continuing to answer your questions. Today's question comes from Fernando Rivera. Do you think Linux desktop user base will ever surpass Windows? Now, that is one hell of a question, and it's full of ifs and buts, but please bear with me. So, as it currently stands, Linux is a very small part of the desktop market, and that's largely down to the fact that it is a... Uh, is an operating system for um, you know computer savvy people. There's not really any way to sort of sugarcoat that. I wish Linux was more accessible. Part of the premise of this channel is to make Linux more accessible to a wider range of people. I feel that I've still got some way to go in that department and I do often feel that this channel does get bogged down in sometimes the politics and the, the nitty gritty of it all and I really enjoy that side of things. So maybe I'm sort of struggling to fulfill that particular goal that I actually set out uh, within this channel but it's still there nevertheless. And I think that might be a bit of a decent metaphor for the Linux community uh, in a wider capacity as well, is that people who are involved with Linux and involved with creating Linux are so passionate about the software itself and the intricacies and the politics and the history behind it that sometimes it's very difficult to convey the relevance uh, of all of that to you know the man on the street to people who aren't really that interested in how computers work, to people that just want to load something on their machine and go. That being said, um, I am not ruling it out, right? Now, as it currently stands, Windows, is it easier to use? Well, that might even be arguable, but there, there, there are enough people running Windows that the community support just is 10 times larger than Linux could ever dream to be, as it currently stands. So even though Microsoft's support might be pretty damn shoddy, um, there's always someone who has run into the same problem because Windows is a pretty standardized operating system. There's only a handful of versions of Windows and most, you know, there are going to be millions of people running each one. Uh, when it comes to Linux, you have got what more than 300 active distributions each with their own little intricacies each with their own repositories and dependency issues and uh, in regards to that then they've got you know sometimes there are distributions that update every six months with ubuntu you can have a problem six months down the line that you wouldn't even have even conceived of six months prior to it um and i think that's kind of part of a problem i think that maybe um there are some things that we need to to address in that department. Maybe Ubuntu might want to switch uh, or put a lot more focus on their long-term support releases. I've noticed that they've actually been shifting in that direction. Maybe more distributions perhaps might want to go down that route in, in, in a more assertive manner. Um, and I think there are things things like this are going to need to be addressed um, when it comes to... and, and making um, the support for Linux just as easy and consistent as standard as possible. Linux, of course, also has lots of different package managers. So an application that's bundled for Ubuntu might not work on, well, it won't work on something like an RPM dis distribution like Fedora or Red Hat, um, and it might not even work on a distribution like um, Debian. Uh, I remember when I was trialing out the alpha version of open broadcast software, which is some software that you can use to do screen recording and streaming on Twitch, that um, it didn't work for um, 1410 for a long period because they were only only uh, testing on support uh, long-term support releases of Ubuntu. Um, so that, again, would be a real problem to people um, who are new to Linux. And there are a, a lot of intricacies to Linux that you kind of need to at least be willing to learn in order to actually um, get your system working on a par with a with a Windows system. That being said, once you know what you're doing, you've got a system that far surpasses Windows. But again, it's 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 an if, isn't it? Now, in regards to its actual success, it depends what you count as a desktop, because very we could very well see um, effectively laptops in a couple of years time using Android uh, maybe with touch screens and you know they could have very well be a hybrid between uh, a mobile device and something that you might use uh, to do office work on we've already kind of seen um, Windows devices try and push in that direction so there's there's nothing to say that there could very well be um, Android based devices that do a similar thing and if that's the case could we start seeing desktop-esque versions of Android? And I think that that's 
I would be surprised if there wasn't an attempt to do that. Um, and in that case, I think that there will be a very real case that um, the sort of the desktop market, and I think I'm probably really including laptops into that as well, could very well surpass the Windows user base. Again, a lot of it depends on what Windows are going to do. Um, Windows, of course, have brought in an app store, which I, I haven't used, but then again, Windows is like on a secondary partition that I dual boot that I haven't booted into in goodness knows how long anyway. Um, but in regards to... Um, uh, yeah, but in regards to Windows, if they make, if they continue to make daft decisions, which there's nothing to say that they won't, um, and that there are some good uh, sort of uh, mobile esque based alternatives that could possibly shift into the desktop market to fill that space, I think that there's a very good possibility that Android, which is Linux, is, 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 is as Linux as anything else. I mean, you can get Android off distrowatch.com and I think last time I checked it was in the top 20 quite possibly might even have made the top 10 by the time this video goes out um, so yes there is definitely a possibility there's definitely a realistic possibility I've also heard stories from you guys down in the comments section about having old netbooks uh, which you've managed to revive just by installing Android onto them um, so again if that is some kind of trend that a company wishes to, to market then who's not to say that, again, Android won't get another big boost of success. But basically, if Linux was to surpass the desktop market, it would be because mobile devices are becoming bigger and more desktop-like rather than um, something like Linux Mint or Ubuntu coming in because Linux Mint or Ubuntu are still operating systems for advanced users. Whether or not we like it, that's kind of the case. And then Arch is for the advancedest of the advanced user, uh, really. Um, so yeah, uh, also I think the Steam machine might determine quite a lot of success as well. If the Steam box um, takes off, uh, we could start seeing um, people having maybe like desktop machines that are Steam boxes. So um, whereas you have, oh, you guys are obviously familiar with the concept of the gaming PC, that could be replaced by the Steam box. So you would still have your mouse, keyboard, monitor set up in a desktop style environment, but you'd be running a Steam box instead of a Windows box. In that case, yeah, if you count that as a desktop machine. But I think the concept of the desktop machine is going to be reduced to, again, advanced users on a wider capacity anyway. I was reading uh, an article in The Guardian about how more and more people um, how, how the desktop market is actually going down in favor of things like the tablet market. Now, I do not like using my tablet for anything more than uh, casual social media kind of stuff, you know, Twitter and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, maybe reading articles on Feedly and, and, and whatever. I couldn't imagine doing my taxes on it or anything like that. That would, that, that to me just, it, it, it sounds like a nightmare, but apparently more and more people are doing it. And maybe it's because my tablet's actually quite a small one. Maybe bigger tablets are easier to use uh, in regards to that. Maybe, you know, you have, they set them up with a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, and maybe that might be something that's, uh, that's, that's you know, that might be a better solution to the problem or whatever. Uh, and in regards to that, I guess, what qualifies as a desktop computer? Well, the lines are actually quite blurred at this point, or at least they, they could very well be in the future. Whereas, well, how, how you know, I mean, obviously, I don't think you'd call a tablet a desktop desktop machine but then you apply a bluetooth and a mouse to it and set it up on a desk and ain't a million miles away um if steam does really well then linux is likely to to do very well by proxy um and i think that there will definitely be some kind of um increase in user user base because there are more games available um it'll get just more publicity um i think that quite possibly if there is any kind of um anti-corporate movement away from microsoft um, and possibly any kind of anti-big data movement, uh, then Linux is likely to benefit out of that. Um, so I would say that it's certainly likely to swing in the direction of Linux, uh, in, in the direction of Linux, but, um, uh, but then again, who knows what Microsoft are going to do. Microsoft have backpedaled on their 8.1 interface and they've gone back to things like the taskbar, um, which is very interesting, actually. I really didn't expect them to do that. I expect that would be more, you know, I, I would have expected, like, GNOME to be the first to do that, to ditch their full screen menu interface um, uh, because sort of open source communities tend to listen to the, the user base more than um, corporate ones. But, hey, there's exceptions to every rule. So, there you go. Um... Do I think it's going to happen? I don't know. 
in my mind, I've just put forward quite a compelling ar argument. Um, depends what you define as desktop. I certainly think that we're going to be seeing more and more um, Android stuff kicking around. Um, and I think that an Android-based laptop is only a matter of time. Um, and I don't know. Um, so to squeeze that onto the desktop, if you count a desktop as your very standard tower, mouse, keyboard, big monitor, uh, I would say that it's unlikely that we'll see it any time soon. However, if you see, if, you know, if you, if you include things like Steam gaming PCs in that, and if you p include maybe laptops in that, if you know, when you say desktop, you mean sort of more production machines then 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 quite likely but um but in regards to the traditional desktop uh probably not anytime soon um but never uh, you know never say never i could uh, um i i i have uh, i have been wrong on many many occasions when it comes down to this anyway thank you very much for the question it's certainly given me a lot to think about please let me know your guys thoughts down in the comment section below and um, that's about it for me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and uh, you've been awesome. Take care now.